So this is a small tutorial on how to use uh, the Tibetan texts so that we become familiar with our practices. And um, I'm showing you a Tibetan te practice text first. And um, it's a compilation of many different practices. Usually uh, Tibetans find the practices that they do in the prayers in many different sources and then they put them together. And so, which is what I've done here, and I've organized it according to how often I do the prayers and everything. And so the first thing that I did was I made little tabs and every time I add something, regardless of where I put it, I have a little tab so that it's easy to find. In general, I know all of the texts that are in here by heart and I also um, know where they are roughly so that I can find them quickly. Usually if I'm in a group of people doing a practices that I'm not familiar with, I know when a prayer or practice is being done, whether it's something I have or not, because I know my practices. So first of all, I have my morning session. And it says number one morning on the first thing, which is a prayer to Guru Rinpoche. And then the Vimala Mitra prayer, a short Guru Yoga practice. Um, and then I have the short Mundro and the long Mundro. Notice I haven't, I don't have any tabs on these because I know where they are. And then following that, I have my morning aspiration prayers. And uh, the first prayer that I have is um, called the Pranidhamma a prayer for entering into omniscience, which I have translated and which is now available. And then after that, I have another prayer, which I haven't yet translated, although I intend to for Bodhicitta. And then I have um, the Mong Chen Ying Tik Ji Lam Dre Bu Malam. And so those are like the prayers that I do in the morning. I have my morning session. And then I have my evening session, which includes a sadhana practice. And then following that, I do protectors. And uh, after protectors, I do a um, confession. For people who do mind training and stuff like that, for example, in the evenings, we always bring to mind everything that we did during the day and where we feel like we didn't do practice or be, weren't able to tame our mind in circumstances. We develop regret or remorse and the commitment not to do it again. And then the Vajrayana format of that is where you actually recite a purification practice, a purification uh, ritual. And um, that helps because a lot of the things that we purify, that we need to purify, we, aren't, we don't even know what they are. And so that's why reading the text is really helpful. And um, I've actually translated all of these purification practices. I have four. When I switch, I do a different one each evening. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. So whichever one of those I do in the evening. So if you were to incorporate that, we'll be, I'll be um, making these all in text format. Right now, the only one that is in text format for Katok Choling texts is the uh, prayer of um, the stainless, Chimi Shakpa, the stainless purification practice that we do in the Tzoks usually. And then after that, I do long dedication and long life prayers. The ones that I know by heart, I don't have in here, but the ones that I don't, for example, like His Holiness Moksha Rinpoche's prayer and Getze Rinpoche's prayer. And then following that, for those of us who have done some of the great perfection retreats with Rinpoche and we have the reading transmission, then I have the Dzogchen Munlam, which is um, almost done being translated and will be in Katok Choling format very soon. Some of you already have a rough draft of it. And then usually, depending on how much time I have, I, I do longer prayers. And um, I'll do, I try to choose a different long aspiration prayer to do each evening. And again, I'll be making these available to Katok Joling um, in our printout format in English for most of you. Already we have the Sampa Thundrup, the prayer for, us for accomplishing all wishes, and the Barche Longso, which is a long um, purification prayer for removing obstacles. And um, I'm working on the Mipam Rinpoche's prayer for the increase of the Nyingma teachings and an organ prayer, which is a prayer to Guru Rinpoche done on the 10th of the month and so forth. So my intention is that all the prayers that I have in here eventually are available 
to us in English. So then this is just a series of other prayers like the Zongshid Munlam, the prayer for excellent conduct, and the uh, Mipan Rinpoche's prayer and Kunzong prayer for of Samantabhadra for their great perfection and many others. And then in the back, after the prayers that I do on a regular basis, then I have various practices that I don't necessarily do every day, but um, that I might do on occasion. For example, this is the real Songchid, the practice for offering smoke offering. And then I have um, the Shakyamuni Buddha practice. And I have um, some other aspiration prayers and different practices and so forth. So I always put in the back the things that I don't do regularly. And so that's, for example, how I have uh, set up my practice text. And then you would want to keep, you want to get a nice cover, for example, like this one that uh, fits. I lost the string on here that would wrap around it, a little rope. But that's then the way that it would look um, if you covered it nicely. And that's, uh, that nice covering is really important. And then I have the Kato Choling practice texts, which is more the format that you're going to be familiar with. And um, again, recently we've done, um, we've printed, so basically at this point, all the practices that we do regularly, shamatha practice doesn't need a specific practice text, but the bodhicitta practice and the heart sutra practice um, have been printed and are available. And then we've also printed a booklet, as you can see, then very similar to the main text, which is uh, prayers before teachings, dedication, aspiration prayers. And so everybody should get one of these because we always use them. Anytime you go to teachings, we'll use this. And then you should learn what's in there because um, a lot of these prayers then we have the prayers that we always do before teachings, but some of these prayers sometimes we do, you could do it other times. For example, there's the gathering accumulations, which involves the seven branch offering and the mandala offering. And there may be other times where you want to recite any of those. And then the dedication and aspirations can be done at, at, after any practice. It's just a general collection of dedication aspiration prayers that um, Rinpoche put in a specific order than here, which he's talked about before. For example, these first three dedication prayers, the first one is the words of the Buddha, the Sunam Di Tamshe Zikbani, which starts by this merit, may all beings attain omniscience and so forth. And then the, and then a small aspiration prayer. And then two further dedication prayers and, um, th and one prayer that looks like three, but it's actually all one prayer, an aspiration prayer. And those come out of the um, Prayer for Excellent and Noble Conduct. And so basically they say that the prayer for excellent and noble conduct is the condensation of all 84,000 aspiration prayers done by the bodhisattvas. And then if that were further condensed, it would be complete here. So when we recite these words, like the bodhisattvas, we dedicate the merit. Like the Buddhas, we dedicate the merit. And then we make these aspiration prayers. We're kind of um, uh, not only reciting prayers that were made by realized and accomplished masters, and ha so there's that power, but also it's a summary basically of all the 84,000 aspiration prayers and especially in the West we don't really have the ability to do lots of different prayers. And then we have additional prayers here. Um, this one we don't know the Tibetan source so it doesn't have Tibetan, but then there's one by uh, Mipam Rinpoche and another one by Jigdro Yeshe Dorje and then some prayers for all the lamas and the Kato tradition to flourish. We didn't, Rinpoche didn't want to put his own long life prayer here or any of the specific lamas because he said since it's like an actual main text, then you wouldn't put that in. However, we have a sheet. There's a separate sheet with um, the Dalai Lama's long life prayer and Kendra Rinpoche's long life prayer that you can keep uh, separately that you would do before the prayers, longevity prayer for all lamas. And then there are additional prayers in this booklet which include the eight verses to the eight auspicious noble ones, which we always do before we begin any practice or at the beginning of a retreat or not any practice, but any kind of project at the very beginning of things. Um, of course, you could do it in the beginning of the day or the end of the day or whatever, but it's for being able to accomplish in a most excellent manner everything that we aspire for and whatever we're endeavoring. And then in here we have the seven-line prayer, 
in the Vajra Guru Mantra, and then a longer version of the Vajra Guru Mantra, which is more of an accomplishment mantra, which we occasionally do during retreats, so I included them here. And then um, a short prayer to Manjushri for developing uh, our mind and intelligence on page 18 and 19 and all the way to 20. And then there's the, the long 37 heat mandala offering, which we might do in elaborate um, empowerments or in the beginning of a retreat or when we've invited a really important lama or if you're doing your mundro and you want to accumulate some of the long one. So that's available. And um, after that is a removal of obstacles, a short one, Barche Lamsel. And then removal of obstacles for natural disasters. If you live in a place that has hurricanes or earthquakes, it's a good thing to recite regularly. And then several different sort of uh, concluding prayers that you might do. For example, if you're practicing according to the sutras, and particularly the wisdom sections, then at the end of a text, teachings, or practice session, you might do this excerpt from the Vajrajedika, the Diamond Sutra, on the wisdom of uh, emptiness by the Buddha. And also then, or if you were doing a secret mantrayana practice, then this is another one, Teradak Lingpa's final words. So generally, you would want to know what's in here because you'll use this a lot. For example, on the days where you do group practice and you just do shamatha, then you start with the seven line prayer, so you need to know where that is, which is on page 17. And then you recite the seven line prayer in the Vajra Guru Mantra and you do that Guru Yoga practice. And then um, after that you do the shamatha practice, the sitting, whatever you, kind you know. And then in the end you dedicate the merit, so you need to know, oh yeah, the dedications start on page five. So this you'll use a lot, before and after teachings. Um, most of these, in terms of how I've organized my text, this, most of the prayers in here I have memorized, so I have it in the back. I don't have the English memorized, so when I have to do it with a group, then I have to pull it out, but the, I can always grab it really easily. And I know, oh yeah, this is a prayer from there. So you wanna know what's in there, so that if we're doing it, you can easily find it, or like, oh yeah, this is the, uh, seven line prayer, we start most of our practices with that. And so you know that's on page 17 in here. Then in terms of the Katok Chongling texts, then um, there's a cover, which is just one cover, which has a front and a back. So I have the back at the end and then the front here. And you would just buy one cover and then all your texts that go inside of it, you would um, put in there. And you want to know what text you've purchased and then you want to organize them according to how often you use them so um, uh, and then in terms of organizing them you could do little tabs which I had done with my previous book which is these little things here and I cut them in half and you saw that in my own personal prayer book and then in here then I actually we, we sell these tabs that we made that are colored tabs so if you like that style you could purchase those, or you can make up your own. Basically, you just want to have it organized so that you can find things easily and quickly, and you know where they are, and you're familiar with them. A Tibetan, all then their, their personal practice texts, they know them all the way through. If they hear a prayer that they don't have memorized, and they, they'll recognize it if it's in their practice text, and um, or if not, then afterwards they might ask someone, what's that prayer? And they would go and find it and photocopy it or write it down and put it in a place where they can use it at the time that they need. So um, that's really important. In terms of the practice texts themselves, it's um, like, for example, the monasteries in Tibet don't provide the text. It's not like you walk in the door and the text is just sitting there and you grab it and it go and it's not all set up so you can just mindlessly read it not knowing what the parts are and stuff like that. Tibetans actually find um, their texts from different sources and they put it together and um, it's not the monastery or the Dharma Center's responsibility to provide those. So I really want to encourage all of you to buy your own practice texts. And um, we're putting together a folder for the groups then for guests. And so then in the future, basically the practice texts, people who come regularly will be expected to have their own. And since of course we just printed a bunch and um, they're not, you know, we're not charging a lot. I think it's for the larger practice sadhanas 
like 15 or 16 dollars and that includes shipping and for the prayers that we're doing that I'm slowly making just like a two bucks to cover the fact that we have to ship it from the printer the cost at the printer and then that we ship it to you later and so it's just to cover costs and um, if you feel overwhelmed because you look and you see, oh my gosh, the Shakyamuni Buddha practice, the Heart Sutra, the Shower of Blessings, the Manjushri practice, and all these other practices have just been printed and I can't afford it, then just buy one every month and slowly do it. You know, it's not a big deal. And um, then eventually, and put it together, you want to organize it well. So for example, in terms of the organization of the text, then... I have it organized where I have the Gundra first because that's like the daily practice. And I'm um, familiar with that. And then after that I have the Heart Sutra. And then um, after that, my text isn't organized as well as I would like because um, cause I don't really use it regularly. I have most of these texts in my smaller texts and the only time I use this is if I'm doing a group practice. And um, if I'm doing a group practice with Katok Choling Sangha, then the things are done in English and I don't know the prayers by heart in, the, in English. And so I, um, I use this. So mine is just kind of randomly put together just so that I can find things. So I have like, there's Avalokiteshvara and then this is, um, after that I have the Medicine Buddha and then Green Tara. Oh no, Shower of Blessings, which isn't in here yet, but it will be. And then there's Green Tara and Shakyamuni and my Jushri, and then after that is Po. I put Po in the back because I rarely ever do it. It's one of those practices you've only done if you've been to the teachings and we don't do it as a group. And um, generally, once you have the signs of it, you don't really do it very often anyway until you're dying. And then, the, and then behind all the sadhana practices, I have protectors. So if I'm doing a soak and we include the protectors, then I have the Ningtik and um, Katok protectors, which are available by Katok Choling. And then after that, I have the Tsok Auxiliary Verses. So in general, then when we have a Tsok, then there's a, this, we have these stages of practice, which is where you, you do the seven line prayer in the beginning as the invitation. And then whichever practice text you're using, whether it's Green Tara or sh Shower of Blessings or any of the other practice texts that you might be doing, then you do the main body of the text and you get all the way to the mantra recitation and following that you might have praises and offerings and some other things depending on how elaborate the practice text is. But after that, before you actually recite the Tsok verses which pertain to that particular text, then we always do some auxiliary practices right there. So for example, if you're doing the protectors, you would do that first. And then following that, the auxiliary Tsok Prayers for performing the tzok include the heart essence of confession. And so that's, um, it could be any confession. Like I mentioned before, I have several that are translated. But Rinpoche has been keeping it very simple, so we do the shortest confession practice. And um, we're actually going to start translating confession as purification practice. Because it doesn't literally, to purify doesn't necessarily mean then only. He says it's a that the whole practice, it, it includes the four powers of purification, which most are very familiar with, the power of regret, the power of the support, the power of the resolve not to engage in those actions again, and um, the power of the actual practice, right? And it involves, and then when you do a purification practice, then you're, you're, you, your mind has those four powers, and then your speech is reciting the words, and then your body you know, paying homage or prostration or whatever you're doing. So it's a combined process through which all these things are purifying. They're refining away those habitual tendencies and changing our experience. So he says that just to say confession, confession merely means to say it. And it doesn't even necessarily mean that there's regret or any of those other most important factors. So we're going to be changing that translation. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. Anyways, so you do in soak then the auxiliary practice may or may not include the protectors, but it always has a confession, Wh whoops, <laughs> have it, a purification practice. And then after the purification practice, it has soak verses, um, which you may, if the, if the text like, if the text has its own soak verses, you recite that first and then you recite these auxiliary soak verses, which is a short offering by Jigme Lingpa. And then um, 
and then you and then you finish that text, whatever it is. Um, you it might have dedication aspiration. If it doesn't include dedication aspiration, then you would use the dedication aspiration in here, or Rinpoche may use a combination of those. So anyhow, whenever you go to practice, then in order that you're not lost while you're meditating, when you practice, you just want to be focused on the key points of whatever section of the practice you're at. So that means that you should sit down with your texts about 10 minutes, maybe even five minutes before the practice starts. So if you're starting at you know 7 p.m. and you don't know your text very well yet, then you would go and you sit down and you think about, okay, so today we're doing shamatha, which means I need the seven line prayer, so you pull this out. In fact, if it's shamatha practice, this is the only thing you're gonna need. And you're like, okay, so where do we start with the seven line prayer, that's on page 17. So you get that ready, okay? And then you're, and then, okay, so we do shamatha, after we do the seven line prayer, then we do the Vajra Guru Mantra, and then we sit, we do shamatha, so I don't need any text for that. And then after that, we do the dedication, which is on page five. So you have this right here, you know, you, you check, you have the page numbers, you know where you need to go for each section, for the beginning, middle, and end of the practice. And then you prepare it, so it's right here and you know where it is. Then during the practice, you're not lost. And I've made cheat sheets, not cheat sheets exactly, but you know, ex practice explanation sheets, which say what we do in the beginning, middle, and end for all the practices that we do, for the Shamatha day, for the Heart Sutra day, and for the uh, Bodhicitta practice day. So you should have all of those. And um, they, they've been given to the coordinators. I've asked them to be printed up and put at the Shrine Room. The coordinators could email them to you if you don't have one and you'd like to know because you'll get lost or something. Then, um, and so that way each day, time you prepare, so okay, so today is going to be Bodhicitta practice day and you think, oh yeah, we start with a seven line prayer. So I have to have this ready on page 17. Is that correct? Yeah, page 17. And then, then we do the practice and I think we don't, the bodhicitta practice includes the dedication and aspiration, so we may only do like a very short dedication, like the first ones on page, after we've read through the whole practice, then we do the short one on page five, sunam di and kewa kuntu. Not completely sure, because I'm not there on Sundays with, or on the practice days with most of the groups. But anyway, so you've got, you set it up. So that took me, what, two minutes? You do that and you think about each part. And it's good also if you think about what you're doing. Okay, when I'm doing this, this is how I'm concentrating my mind and focusing. And that way when you do it, you're not worrying about whether you're doing it right. And that's your study. And if you did that five or ten minutes before every practice, eventually you wouldn't need to anymore. But you wouldn't be lost. And so it's your job to educate yourself and know where you are in the practice and stuff like that. It's really... Um, kind of sad that in America people don't even put like five minutes into looking through their texts and setting things up before and then they're lost and they think it's because the texts are hard and it's just not really that hard. It would be like most of you, for example, cook pretty regularly probably and you don't need to practice so much because you've done it so many times. But if someone came into a western kitchen and they'd never cooked before in their whole life, they wouldn't be able to do it. And so just like every single thing in the universe, we need causes and conditions to be able to bring about a result. So with practice, we have to learn it. And it doesn't take that much. It just takes repetition. And it takes just an extra five or 10 minutes each time. I remember once when I was um, doing a red tar practice in uh, Ashland, Oregon, about 10 years ago. And my stepmom came and she was sitting next to somebody who'd been there for about five, been practicing with that group for about five years. And that person couldn't follow the text all the way through. And they said to my stepmom, I've been doing this for five years and I still can't do it. And my stepmom never came back. And um, she was just like, if it's that difficult. And I, and I said to her, it's not that difficult. It's that that person didn't spend the time to go through. And in, in the Red Tara text, there's a, a guide in the beginning that says if you're doing a short Red Tara or a medium length or a long one, and it has a guide. And I used to sit down and go through and arrange all my pages. And it only took about five or 10 minutes before each session. And do it, I would go through and say, I'll flip from this page to that page and figure out where I was going and everything. And um, after a few times of doing that, it was really easy for me. And um, it was because that person didn't ever look at the text when they weren't practicing. And that's the time that you learn how to use the text, when you're not practicing, not during the session, but before the session or at another time you get to know it. So 
get to know your practice texts. It's, a Tibetan practitioner spends more time with their practice texts than anything else. I don't, probably many of you haven't had the fortune to see like an old lama's lama being the general term, an old practitioner or, or monk or nun's text, but the sides are all worn from their use, usage and stuff like that. And so um, if you know your texts, it'll be easy. And uh, I want to encourage everyone to learn them. Then the last thing is I have a, is the aspiration prayers. Um, my intention, my aspiration is um, to, as I mentioned before, to have all of the practice prayers that are generally done that we're most familiar with in the Nyingma tradition and which I have in my daily practice text. And right now what I'm doing, most of them are rough drafts. Some of them are not. Um, what I'm doing is I'm making them slowly in rough draft form and they just say draft copy because Rinpoche doesn't have the time to answer the questions but it doesn't mean we that I have in the translation but we can still start to do the prayers and so my intention is that to slowly gather the prayers and as we get them then we'll make them available for one or two dollars um, one or two dollars and so forth um, each so that it's cheap and doesn't cost you guys anything and we're not making any money on it and then eventually at the end, when I've gathered all the prayers and they're all translated, and ideally after I've, um, also Timothy will have gone through them, so they'll have a double edit and edited and everything, and then ask, uh, find a llama who I can ask the questions that I have and clarify. Then I'm going to make it a book. And that way, the extra or additional aspiration prayers, it's not like you have 50 of these texts. But in the meantime, as you buy them and use them and get them, then what I would do is use these little markers that I have, uh, showed, that I showed you before, these things here. And just mark it so you can easily get to them and know where they are and organize them according to how much you recite them. What you'll find is that some aspiration prayers you really like and other ones you just don't have a karmic connection to and you do you do whatever. But it but they are important um, for lots of reasons primarily because we don't even, our ignorance is so great we don't even know what to make, to aspire for, what to make aspirations for. And that's the great thing about the realized masters of the past is they knew what we needed to make aspirations for to make a connection with to begin that interdependent link of being able to fulfill all those aspirations. So there is an importance and um, slowly we'll get those to you. Then in terms of um, each of the centers, we're uh, creating a practice book for people who um, are new. For example, we'll have like, it'll be a notebook, like um, a spiral notebook. And it will be very simple, very easy to use, and it'll have all of the different parts. The prayers will be all gathered together and mixed up um, so that basically no one has to search anywhere. It's not like you have two or three different books. And so if you're, it's your first day to the practice group and stuff like that, then you would come and you take a three-ring notebook and it has a little um, tab that says, okay, today's Buddhichi to practice, you flip there, and it has all the different parts, beginning, middle, and end, all gathered together. Now, and then we should, we'll probably make like print maybe like five to ten for each center, and those will be loaner copies that belong to the Dharma Center, and, um, and um, then also if for some reason you forgot your text one day, then you could borrow one from the Dharma Center, or for people that are new, then they'll have a text that they can use and that's really easy and they don't get lost or feel frustrated with. The reason why we're not making it like that for us, where it's all just mixed up and all the prayers are in the exact order and why we have different texts, like we have, for example, the seven line prayer is separate. It's not, uh, we don't add it to all the different practice texts even though we do it in the beginning. Or for example, the Tsok Auxiliary prayers, the Confession and other Auxiliary Tsok offerings by Jigme Lingpa or the Protectors. The reason why we don't just mix them all up and have every text have all of them and all the dedication and aspirations is because then um, there are several reasons. One is we lose the authenticity of the source. We don't realize that all those different parts come from different places. Two is that we really don't also, if we don't ever think about the texts, then we don't really think about their order. Then we also don't think about the key points. And so we might just find ourselves reading all the way through without ever generating the key points of those practices and realizing their different components of practice. And we don't learn them. And so we never really realize the different components of what a tzok is. Or we don't really realize that 
the, the beginning, middle, and end, and it's all mixed up. And so it actually is a disservice to us. Um, there's a, a great value to learning the text. So I want to encourage everyone to learn your texts and to really enjoy them. It, they're a beautiful thing. Okay, I hope this was helpful for you. You have a beautiful day.